Can you hear me now? Yes, you can. I know you can hear me now. Because I can see the damn thing moving. So, once again, Vikings to the bell end. No change. Once again, I've been waiting to paint this mini since April. I've now waited another five minutes sorting out my effing sound because for some reason Streamlabs just decided actually you don't need an audio input. You just don't. So we'll remove that. Let me just make sure that everything else that is meant to be there is there. Slideshow is correctly there. This is good. Yeah. We're fine on that. Jar, the boss, the alert box. We'll find out later on, I guess. Ugh. Cool. We're all good. Right. We're going to start off on Ragnar. Now, he is currently Ragnar the Disassembled. This is totally fine. He's in, what's that, seven bits. And the reason behind this is, of course, if you're unaware, is that sub-assemblies are much, much better to paint with, especially with an airbrush than any fully assembled mini. Now last stream, we showed you on these guys how you can, with a little bit of care and attention, still completely paint a mini with an airbrush regardless of the fact that it is put together. Remember all of the metal on the gun and on his head, we did do whilst this guy was fully assembled. So, why are we gonna do this in sub-assemblies? Well, because we can doesn't necessarily mean that we should. What we're going to do is we're going to do things like the sword and the uh, shoulder pad. We're going to get those done this evening because we're going to go with some yellow on that. And I want to do it this way around because I'd rather paint the yellow here and then just mask the sword blade off to do some grey, like grey blue space wolf colour on the gloves, the armour pieces and all that sort of stuff and only have to paint a rim of a shoulder pad then paint the entire part of that yellow after we've done a load of grey. So you've got to make sure when you are looking at a model that has got a lot of complex bits that you want to do in sub-assemblies that you make sure you choose the right ones. So for instance, all of the armor has been put together. You'll see that we've customized his base a little bit. We've built it up with some rocks. We can get some water effect going on there later on. We're going to get some icicles going on right at the very, very end of the process. Obviously, going to cast them out of UV resin. We separated his head because painting faces is something we haven't done a lot of on the channel. And I really want to spend a decent amount of time painting this guy's face. We'll probably spend one stream just doing this tiny part of the mini. One of the most important parts though, we've got things like his cape, mostly. This bit obviously will be painted grey. This is the bit that his backpack attaches to, which we've got just here. But that you're never really going to get the, the chance to see. So this bit, we're going to be painting it in by hand, in the greys, which means we've got all of this that we can airbrush. We've got this beautiful cloak full of detail. We've got this wolf pelt we can do. Loads of stuff going on there. And we've kept this part separate. The reason being is because that bit kind of goes on around here. Basically, it surrounds the entirety of his shoulders at the back and across the front of his chest make it very, very difficult to place that on the mini if we glued those together. So we've got a few tiny sub-assemblies there, but this is where we're starting. Let's get it on. We're going to be using the airbrush. And the way I like to paint yellows is by working up from ochre. Now, this is Bogrim Brown from P3. We're going to be putting this over black, and it'll take a couple of coats to get through, but this will go on black really, really nicely and will give us this colour. Whereas if we started straight away with yellow, and I like my yellows to be bright, so we're using flash gitch yellow. If we started straight away with this, you'd have a billion coats where it just looks green. And that's no good to anyone. We're then going to ruin it by putting white all over it. And there's a reason for that. You'll see it's going to look terrible for a little while, but you'll get it. And then finally, we will be putting in some nice warm shades, some good tones with some troll slayer orange. For those of you who have seen my knights in person, it's the same kind of progression that I've used on them. I'm just going to use it on some much smaller areas, including obviously that tiny ass shoulder pad. So, compressor fired up. 
Let's see who we got in chat. George, Hurtus, Demon Badger, the name I can't read, Cranblade, Viking, Smithy, Brom, Snake, Dez, Voodoo, Salvirus. How's it going, guys? Plenty of flow improver. Everyone's best friend when you're an airbrusher. Plenty of that in the pot. And like I said, we're starting with that Bogram brown, that mocha color. Mocha? Ochre color from P3. Compress go brrrr. So most of you will have seen that today Games Workshop released the core rules of the new box set. They've released it a little bit earlier than they were going to, I believe. Just what I've been told. Because originally this was going to be probably Monday. But due to some unscrupulous bastards being unable to contain themselves when it came to the book, it has been plastered all over the internet. And so as a consequence, Gido, I think, just thought, you know what, fuck it, let's just get it out. Let's just do it. So, most of you will at least have had a glance over the new 40k rules. It's a damn good rule set. It really is. There's some very, very cool things there. New Cross you know, looks sweet? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, they should be pissed about it. Anyone that got hold of that book was either somebody that signed an NDA and said we won't share it with people. Now everyone knows that that's going to happen. Right? You're going to share it with somebody because keeping a secret is hard. Especially when it's something that's cool like that, right? So everyone knows that you, there's going to be a couple of people that get their eyes uh, or hands on some of that stuff earlier than intended. But it's also kind of one of those things that's like, yeah, we, we know it's happening, don't don't worry. It's like when you work at a bar, everyone knows that every probably Saturday night after the shift, everyone has a pint that never gets paid for. And that's totally fine because it's just, it's part of the job is actually part of doing what you do is having that little bit of leeway but plastering it all over the internet that's, that's not a good thing Hicko how you doing man Dreads he says I like plasma being unmodified now yes yes I do too but not for the same reason as you I imagine a lot of players that uh are liking that is that well you know we don't have to worry about a negative modifier for our plasma guns therefore we don't have to worry about dying i'm more worried about the positive modifiers to hit like the uh completely invincible plasma uh servitors because they wouldn't die to any plasma shots because they couldn't actually roll a one unless you were minus three to hit Stuff like that, man. Nobody needs that in their life. So we just dried this off with a hairdryer. Coming down in now with our second good pass of this meaty ochre. Oh, sorry, Bogram Brown, this one is. There's another colour called meaty ochre, which is very, very similar to this. Crosby says this stream is like torture. Well, look, just follow along at home, dude. That's, that's all you got to do then I'm sure you could have one that's painted just as well. From a distance. Again, hit these, dry them down. So it's really important that we get this initial color really, really solid because everything is going to key off of this. So even if it takes five, five whole coats, seven whole coats, it won't take that many. 
need to make sure that this is a really, really solid finish. So it's looking ever so slightly orange on camera. It's a little darker in real life than it is on film. This is a little bit more of sort of a, a snake bite leather color. If you imagine the brightest points on something, if you use one at a snake bite contrast, that's kind of more the color that this is. One more pass over the shoulder pad. And we're good. Now, we're going to cover up almost all of that program brown, but the first thing we're going to do is going to leave a very small amount of that in the pot and then grab our flash gets yellow. Now, this obviously is an extremely bright yellow, and if you think about the transition from one to the other, it's very, very extreme. It's okay. We're going to use this to basically cover up almost all of what we've got on there. The step after this will look really bad. Like, really, really, really bad. And that's where that white ink comes in. Now, people that have been around the stream for a long time will know that this is being done for a reason, and you'll see the reason very clearly towards the end. But for that, that step, my god. Oh, it looks so bad. So bad. Uh, so, more things we would like to find in the new 40k rules. Des said charging models can now target models that heroically intervened into them. Yes. Not necessarily even into them. That's that's a, a misleading. So, when you declare a charge now, if you, in eighth, declare a charge, you can only make attacks against minis that you've declared a charge against. In ninth, you can make attacks against any minis that you've declared a charge against, or any unit that heroically intervened. So the reason that's different from heroically intervened into them is because due to the way that combats alternate, you could end up with a situation where you have had some that didn't heroically intervene into your attacking unit, but you're now in a position to be able to get to them and attack with a clever pile-in or consolidate and maybe even a fight twice strategy. So there's loads of cool shenanigans you can do there. Uh, what else have we got? How is that a thing with plastic service tools? I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, George, peace out, dude. Right. Here we go. So I'm going to cover up almost all of what we've got there. I'm going to take this nice and slow because we do want to make sure we get a strong transition. There's a very small amount left right at the end. I think what we'll do is just knock the brightness down ever so slightly so it's easier to see. Yellow, obviously, one of those colours. Kind of tricky to film. There we go. And again, this will take several passes. This is still going to be substantially quicker and, if I'm honest, better looking than if we were to paint this yellow by hand. There we are. So that's looking pretty damn yellow already. We've got loads of way to go. Remember, this yellow is kind of a mustard yellow, a bit like an English mustard. Still got some of that Bogram brown in from the start. On the shoulder pad, same deal. Coming gently from the top, getting that sort of zenithal styled highlight. Bring it nicely down the sides till you've almost removed all that Bogram brown. Just leave a little bit in at the bottom, leave it in some of the shadows. So we're not going to try and come in from here. We want to make sure that the wolf head that we've got on here, that emblem, still casts its own shadow. Eris is going to help us do that quite simply. So it's been a very exciting day for me. It's been a pretty shit day as well, unfortunately. We've, uh, have I eaten today? I had a banana. Brilliant, I've had a banana all day. That's, that's how busy my day has been. I hadn't even remembered to eat. I think we went past hungry a while back. Um, work's been murder. 
work through lunch break, clearly work through dinner. We've got a long weekend ahead of us as well, which is not ideal. So that's been the shit side of things. And also, every single thing that I've had to do has been bugged. Everything. So I couldn't even get any uh, any actual testing done. We've just had to write bug reports over and over again today, which is the most boring thing I could do. Um, but the day has also been good because currently the little posse of us that are traveling to Vegas, Vegas baby, for the LVO, been looking at hotel rooms. Holy fuck balls. There are some big ass hotel rooms out there. Crazy. Normally in England, when you end up with a hotel that's got a room with two beds in it, because there's, there's three of us going, there's possibly a fourth, so we're going to get in two rooms with two beds, because the suite is pricey. Very pricey. Uh, it's going to cost us about an extra grand each to have a suite, which is silly money, considering we'll be spending fuck all time in the room. Um... But we started looking at hotels, and we're going through some pictures of uh, Paris, which is right next to the venue. You've got Paris, and then you've got Bally's, and there's an underground, like, uh, arcade, essentially. It's, it's like a shopping center that is just a corridor between two hotels. Crazy, right? And um, so we're probably going to stay at Paris which is somewhere that because of all of the movies that I have watched with that effing thing in, I just want to stay there. I just want to. That's, that's the only reason I want to stay there is because of films. Peckish! What up, dude? You don't have to worry. All we've done so far is paint some yellow. That's it. And all we've done really is put down a base coat and a single highlight. Now you can see we've got a nice transition on the sword already but by the time we've finished this little spot in the middle here kind of tricky to film but right here this bit will start to look grey you get this a lot when you're blending so frequently it'll be a case of where two colours are too close to each other on the colour color wheel but equally sometimes it's just a case of they they contain a part of a pigment um, that clashes. And this bit will just look a little bit grey. And I'm hoping I can showcase that before we end up finishing it off with some of that uh, Trolls Lair Orange just to come in right down here. But that's the reason we'll be doing it, is to stop this spot on the sword and on the shoulder pad it will be just in around the bottom of the, the wolf's head really more than anything else those bits will start to develop a bit of a grey hue. Obviously, we want to avoid that. So I'm going to give it one more quick pass with this, just to really intensify that yellow that we've got. Make sure we've come in and hit all the area around the teeth of the sword as well. I've been told this is going to be on display in a living room. Pride of place. And so peckish. We're building you a little bit of a scenic base. So you've got Ragnar on the rocks. That's really annoying. As soon as I put that hand in, look at how dark it goes. And dark. And light. And dark. And light. So, one hand behind the back. We're building you a bit of a scenic base. We've got a little rocks surrounding the fallen imperial statuary thing that he's on. We're going to get some water effects in there. We're going to be getting some icicles hanging off the back of his uh, his base there. Maybe a few very small ones on the front by the time we're finished. We're going to show you how to do that on stream. That's always a cool stream. So this guy's going to look baller as fuck, mate. Absolutely baller. Uh, Des, that is exactly why I said to do that on the dozer blade. It's because during a point in that transition, there's, a, there's a, a section where it gets really desaturated and it looks gray. And because of that, you just need to do that extra bit. Put two gloves on, it's an option. We're trying to avoid that, that option. 
because I hate wearing gloves on my airbrush hand. It's very difficult to control. Uh, you get a little bit of slippage. Nobody wants some slippage. Sorry. Brother, you're excited. I wanted to paint this mini for such a long time. I killed Kalgar and chopped off one of his arms. Okay, dude. Okay. It's, it's a strong way to go. Give me those gauntlets of Heracles. Was it, no, gauntlets of Ultra Armor of Heracles. That's it. So, next step. White ink. This is why there's no point in putting on two gloves, because... Damn it, it, it actually... Flesh tone, no. White, we're fine with. Pink, no. Andunkel. Andukel? Andunkel. Thank you for that follow and welcome to the stream, man. Paint the hand black like your yellow mohawk. Fuck no, dude. That shit takes ages to get off your nails and I don't need that. So we're using white ink, and we've cleaned out the, the pot there to make sure there's only the white ink in. This is going to look terrible immediately. As soon as you start spraying with this, it's going to look absolutely horrible, and it's going to look like a horrendous, horrendous mistake, but you'll have to just bear with me. The reason we're doing this is because we start with a black undercoat, right? And I like working for a black undercoat because it helps get a nice dark color towards the darker ends of things like the sword. It's also the color I want to undercoat all of the armor to make sure that's consistent throughout. So this will get a quick paint job coat of black over there before we start working on the armor plates. However, to get yellow to its absolute brightest, you need to put it under, sorry, over a white base coat. So we got a transition from here to about here, really, where that Bogram brown still exists a little bit. What we're going to do now is going to take the white and we're going to come in from the top down to about here with the white. So in a second, when we apply nothing but flash gets yellow, we can go all the way over the white, give ourselves the brightest possible yellow at the top, and then that will fade into the yellow and then finally, of course, into that Bogram brown, which will become orange. Hobby's a wonderful thing. I almost don't understand what you're saying, but I understand what you're doing. Well, that's good. That's good. Hopefully, this will make sense when we start doing it. So here's that white ink. Just gonna thin it down a little bit more to stop some speckling. And always, guys, remember if you're mixing white in your airbrush use something completely clean i'm using a toothpick to mix it in the pot rather than a brush has been left in some dirty paint water or something similar even though tonight's paint water has been cleaned out entirely and it's brand new and fresh still not putting that brush in white ink because that brush is not fresh so start the spraying right at the top you see it getting really really pastel and then just work that down frost fang. We're working from a distance. Why are we working from a distance? Does anyone know? Can anyone tell me? Why aren't we just getting right up close and personal with the, the sword? Why are we hanging all the way back over here? Who's got any ideas? So you can dust it gently. We're not doing the fucking housework, dude. It's an airbrush, not a feather duster. Now I understand where you're going wrong. Smooth transition, thinner coverage, spreads the pigments out, exactly that. So if we work right up close, by the time our cone of paint hits the airbrush, sorry, hits the mini coming from the airbrush, it hasn't had a chance to expand. So you're looking at a very narrow beam of paint, essentially. By working from such a distance, you get something that's much softer at the edges. And to create a really, really nice transition that's super smooth, this is kind of what you want to do. You want to be as far away from it as you can without the paint drying in the air. Obviously, if you're 
too far away and you're not using a lot of flow improvement and things like that, the paint will dry on its journey from the airbrush nozzle to the mini and you'll end up with a very grainy um, surface, almost like a chalky surface. Social distancing, that's right, even airbrushes need to look, uh, look, look out for themselves for that. So, because the ink that we're using is very, very thin, there is about six drops of flow improver and two drops of ink that we've put in here. We're going to need to do several passes to build the top up to its absolute brightest white. But as soon as we take our hand away from the lens, because this is immediately the darker side of things, you can see that is extremely bright. Still going to take four or five passes to get that to exactly where we want it to be though. And it's worth taking your time when doing stuff like this. This is a massive focal point of the Mini. Uh, absolutely, yeah, don't let COVID have flow improver. Yeah, yeah, it'll go more than two meters there, mate. It'll stop it drying out in the air. Helps it flow from victim to victim. Right, let's pop that down for a second, let that cure. Work on the shoulder pad. Same principle applies. For the shoulder pad though, rather than going all the way down to sort of here, we're going to stop it about there. And the reason behind that is by the time we've got this down that's quite dark, we're going to be painting that probably a black colour. Uh, this will be a nice uh, bright Space Wolf grey blue style. So if we go all the way down to here, the whole thing will end up too bright with that all around it. So we're going to stop it about there to allow ourselves to have a nice dark area so it won't be too stark away from the black. Hicko, peace out dude, see you in a bit. So again, working from a zenith or to make sure that all of these areas underneath with that uh, embossed wolf head do cast a shadow. And again, working from a distance, making sure this is nice and diffuse. Keeping those edges really soft. using a very very small amount of paint if we spider web this it's recoverable like everything's recoverable but it is it's more work than I want to do so on last stream if you didn't watch it you can go and watch it on YouTube it should be up there by now uh, so estimation point YouTube for a link to the channel go subscribe there if you haven't already you can go and watch on there just how we can control an airbrush and we can make sure we get only the results that we want and only the areas painted that we want regardless of how thin our paint is or how much pressure comes out. So that might be worth a watch. But we're using the same techniques here. Making sure we're applying the smallest possible amount of paint coming out. And because we're working at a distance we are using quite a lot of air pressure. So we're on full bang for that. Right, that looks very, very white to you guys on stream, but I promise you, this could definitely be whiter. Why did that not change it? So we're coming from this angle, darker. Coming from this angle, no change. Is it my palm? Yes. So as long as you use my palm, no, still no. What the fuck is up with this? This is weird. This is weird. This could definitely be whiter though. So we go back to the sword, get another couple of coats down here. And we really want to concentrate this at just the end of the blade now. That's going to be the brightest possible point on the mini. It's also going to be the highest point on the mini. So need to make sure that that really stands out. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Pink wavelength, cam don't want. In that case, this isn't going to be a good cam to take to Vegas. There we go. Right. Now we need to flush the airbrush out. So because we're doing a massive change in the hue, the value, sorry, of the, uh, the paint we're about to use. We're gonna go from pure white to putting yellow in the pot. 
We want to make sure that we are going to get a true yellow. So we're just flushing that out. We'll backflow it a little bit. What color would you highlight bone white with? So if you've got a color that is that kind of um, light bone anyway, so we're looking at like a Menoth white highlight, uh, or maybe just bone that's been highlighted up with white, you can pretty much only go to highlighting with white. So adding some white into the mix and building that up even further. Um, it's going to be one of those things that you, you have to kind of look at the shadows that you've got on the mini, you have to look at your mid-tones on the mini, and make the decision about how bright you can actually go before it looks uh, unnatural with your highlight. But white is pretty much the only option you've got for that. Uh, yeah, box price leaked in USD, is $200 essentially. Still looking at around 120 UK price. Because let's be honest, all of the prices for things that are outside the UK aren't just a straight conversion factor. It's not just, well, it's this much back home, so you play 196.76 dollar dues. There's transit costs, there's taxes, there's um, like local depot charges for labor and all that sort of shit. There's import costs as in like just the import tax as well as things like sales tax and so on. So there's all of those things to be added onto it. So I'm still going with 120 quid. So the yellow we're going to use now is very, 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 very thin. We've gone four to one, flow and prove the paint. So we're essentially just painting with a glaze through the airbrush right now which is most of what you do with an airbrush anyway, but when you go this thin, it really behaves like it too. So you absolutely have to be careful. If you go too hard, too fast, you will immediately spider web it out, yeah? So you can still absolutely hammer on the trigger. We're full down. As long as you control the amount of paint perfectly. Okay, so same as we were doing last time. Just showing you guys how you can get the absolute results you want regardless of how thin something is or how heavy your air pressure is so remember we're working at first trigger pull about 45 psi it does go down very rapidly to about 22 and a longer extended bit of use cake fist says 160 mm, unlikely So now I'm going to start bringing that yellow in and just gently introducing it. I'm not going to rush this. We are going to bring the mini back from that absolutely hot garbage burning ass phase that it was in a minute ago. And this is going to be the brightest possible yellow. We are still going to highlight this, obviously going to be using a mixture of bone and yellow to do that. And here's where, certainly in real life, hopefully on the stream you'll see it, the transition, that bogrim brown into the yellow that we laid down earlier on starts to become very desaturated. And it almost starts to look grey. And it's all because of how bright this yellow is. Everything else just pales into the background and looks like nothing in comparison. So, very important that you consider things like that when you're doing your blends. And you ensure that you've got a plan for what happens if, essentially. So if you look just where it says the G in Frostfang, it's not really yellow, it's not really brown, it just looks a bit... Mm, mm, it's not really either colour. That's why we need to go in with the orange at the very, very end and really pop that out. What we do in the runes, painting the runes, uh, they will probably be 
just a recessed darker color. I don't want to do things like we could paint the rooms blue, for instance, and try and get a little glowing effect on the rooms. But at that point, you'll end up with something that could really clash with the rest of the model. Depends on what else we've got going on. Uh, around the hair, around the face, the wolf skin, all that sort of thing. Probably want to have a good look at that first. See what those things look like before we start thinking about things like that. And even if we do do, do, do a set of glowing rooms in blue... We won't be doing it with the airbrush. We want to keep the glow only on the inside of the runic letter itself. Otherwise, you end up with all of this being a blue smudge in the middle of this beautifully yellow sword. Let's move on to this. We're going to come back to that sword in a second with the yellow just to get even more of this down. And you'll really see now how that desaturated effect happens. This is a much larger surface area in terms of width to work with so as soon as we start getting this on with the bright yellow you'll immediately well once it stops blowing the camera right admittedly uh, but you will immediately be able to see just how grey and boring that bogan brown ends up so it's just something to watch out for obviously the fix is to go in with a more vibrant colour give it some love bring it back up to a colour that we're happy with remember uh, over here I like to do everything in as bright colour schemes as possible we want all of the contrast, we want those crazy transitions super smooth airbrush in but more important than anything else is that colour contrast so this looks relatively serviceable but the suit, look at that yeah, all around that dog's nose, just underneath it where the R rune is. Just looks great. Just looks great. So that's what we need to fix next. I'm going to get the yellow built up to exactly how I want it. I'm going to dry that down with some air from the brush. And then once that's good to go, then we're going on with our orange. As before, stay at the top, keeping our distance, just letting this go on super slow. There you go. Let's go back to the sword. Just be sure we've got a solid coat with this especially right at the very tip of the blade. And we are using paint that is unbelievably thin. That's good. Let's flush that through. Give a quick clean through. Hobo J, what up, dude? So... It isn't actually grey, you're right. So we've not used any grey paint. So therefore it can't be grey, right? We've used an ochre, we've used yellow, and we've used white. So the white will be part of what desaturates it. But it can't make it grey. At that point you've just got an extremely pastel ochre or an extremely pastel yellow. You, you can't have grey. So it's just the way that our brain perceives it. Let's zoom right in on this. So it's just below the F on this side of Frostbank. There is a band of what definitely looks like grey, and that's the next thing we're going to fight, and that's what we're going to do with this Troll Slayer Orange. By the time we get some of this in there, the bottom end of that sword is really, really going to perk up. So as always, get some flow improvement going on. And go very, very, very thin, very glazy with this orange. So we go one to three. Flow improvement of paint. No, other way around. One to three, paint the flow improver. 
Crosby's crying. You look so good. Could have been yours, man. Could have been yours. But you know what? You, you just weren't lucky. You, you just weren't. But it did, however, go to a die-hard doggo fan. Package loves his Space Wolves. So it has gone to a good home, man. So, just going to move that out of the danger zone. Danger zone. I'm going to hit the bottom end of the sword. So as before, we're going to work quite a, a long distance away from our, our mini. We're going to make sure we start away from the sword and just bring the arrow shit in this way rather than starting here and moving over. We come that way and off the mini. And we're looking to get a nice strong reinforcement to the colour at the bottom there. And this will help eliminate what we see as grey. So you've got a nice warm orange starting to build. And we get a lot more of that in to really, really bring this section in line. But if we just take a quick look at how this is now. Got that side. And got that side. See the difference in colour that we've got. There you've got orange that runs into yellow. There you've got that weird grey. There, no grey. Very warm blade for, for, called Frostfang. Yeah, absolutely, man. It cuts the frost, you see. So the point of what we've done today, so far, is just to make sure that you guys are thinking when you're doing your airbrush blends, when you when you have a path in your head, and you know, right, I'm going to start at this colour and then end at this colour, don't forget to examine it, maybe go back to the start, and if it comes to it, just bring in another colour, just to be sure that you've got your values and your hues right. So you could be painting something uh, blue, for instance. Let's say you've gone with a bluey green colour, like a dark teal at the start, and working that up to teal at the top, you might end up with the same thing happening there, where it's just something hasn't quite gone right. Well, just go back to the start and lay down some more of that foundation colour you used. Really pop it out. Airbrushing is never a process that only works one way because there's so much that you can do with it. And a thin glaze of this painted over that ochre and over the yellow will look different to the yellow painted over it. You, you've always got both sides of the coin on that. Demon Badger, I am telling you now, brother. When you, when you start using an airbrush and when you get to the point where you're actually becoming relatively proficient with it, you have this horrible, horrible moment where in your head you go, why the fuck wasn't I doing this 20 years ago? All that time I've waited, God damn it. That, that's what happens. Everyone should have an air rush. It doesn't matter if it's a you know, known brand airbrush like the one I'm using the Iowater Eclipse though if you are going to spend some money on an airbrush I strongly recommend this but it doesn't matter if it's this or a cheaply made sort of Chinese uh, found on Amazon for 15 quid airbrush you can still do exactly the same as this with one of those cheaper airbrushes this just makes my life easier you get more quality of life improvements with an airbrush like this. You don't have to be quite as careful with your trigger. Although you know I'm still very careful with the trigger. You don't have to be quite as um, 
brutal when it comes to the cleaning because it breaks down into a much more manageable set of parts to clean. You just got an easier throw of it. Well, I can strip this airbrush down and clean it in a rush in about a minute and a half. My old Mr. China one used to have to use tools to break down fully. That was a bastard to deal with. So, for anyone that's ever had a bit of a rant about, God, I hate airbrushes. There's so much work you've got to do just to be able to use a damn thing ever again. You've just got the wrong product. That's all. So you've got a nice fade. We're now just coming in right from the top. We're aiming just into the recess on this shoulder pad. Just to really darken down that side of it. That's going to be our deepest shadow. That little recess between the shoulder pad rim and the rest of the shoulder. And let's be honest, we know it's going to get a wash on there, but let's really bring that down. There you are. Like I said, this one, we wanted to keep darker, and we'll get more on that orange side, because this is going to be black, and that will pop off against everything else we've got there. It's going to need to, because when we ring all of this with that very light Space Wolves blue, all of this will immediately be less bright and less vibrant. Cool. So there we go. We've got some yellows and some oranges. I'm going to leave these to one side and let them cure. Let's do something a little bit more fun. Let's work on the cape. So we've got this bit of cape, and there should be all of the bits of cape. There's this bit of fur, which will paint... Uh, yeah, that looks like cloth rather than looks like the inside of animal sin. So let's get some uh, some fur going on, some uh, cape going on. This, we're going to do red. Now we've got two ways of doing red. We're not going to do the green transition to red. Won't work for this. It's going to be no good. So we can either do red up from a dark red. So you just mix it with black and go very dark red up to very bright red. Or we can do red up from brown. I'll let you guys choose. So dark red or brown. Pop them in the chat. Let me know how you, you'd like me to paint this. What can you got now? This is a Panasonic Lumix GX85 uh, mirrorless camera. So this is essentially like a DSLR, but it doesn't contain all of the, um, the mirrors and the, the flappy bits and pieces. So this is... It's a strong camera, dude. Caught in 4K. It's, well, you can see it actually, it's just there. That's the, the lens. So. Yeah. So we've got one request for brown, one request for dark red. A couple more suggestions in the chat. You've got a minute. Rocky, what up, dude? It's really good. The downsides to it, that's just over 400 pounds. I think it's about 430. Then adding in things like an HDMI cable that's long enough to go from here to the back of the PC. Um, adding in things like a, a constant charge, like a DC adapter going into the camera. Uh, and then the capture card that we've got adds 250 pounds to that so it's uh, it's up there but we've been saving for it as an upgrade to the stream hopefully the quality here is much better than it used to be the old camera that was top down is now this one looking at me it's still very cheap i know <laughs> i know because i kept looking at them like ah two grand on sale right we've got Two extra suggestions for red, so that's where we go. I'm going to throw some of that into the mix for damn sure. I'm going to throw some of this into the mix just in case. 
and we're definitely going to be using some of that. Let's see, is there anything else I need for this? No, nope, not at all. So, you could do this with literally just these two colours, and this is basically what we're going to use all the way through the cake. We're not going to use any orange or any yellow until we get to the brush highlighting stage. And the reason behind that is, of course, we've just used those two elements on the sword. We want to keep this very different from that. But obviously, as a highlight, that's probably the option we'll go with rather than the pink. Let's start off with these two in the airbrush. We're going to go mostly black, a little bit of red, and it's going to be super, super dark. New toys, absolutely man. I bet you can't wait to get your hands on some of those. They're a bit of a sod to put together, so uh, I'm glad the shop's got you as the chief assembler. Uh, assembler? -er? That's what we're going with. That's what we're going with. Rocky, most of what he spends his time doing is probably painting Space Marines. It will be soon. That's basically the same thing, right? So you go on 50% red, 50% black, and then an equal amount of paint to flow and prove. So you've got like a one to one to two mix of red and black. Let's see how this turns out. Yeah, it's looking good. We need to go darker? No, no, we're good on that. All right, sweet. So, obviously, all of the underside of the cloak needs to be done, as well as these areas in here. Drake in them! How you doing, buddy? Oh, wait, that's a gifted sub. Rocky. Let's not now. Let me give Drake his meeps. There you go, dude. All right, let's get it on. So all of the cloth, you get a base coat with this. And make sure we hit these areas underneath the uh, the wolf pelt. We've established that we're going to paint that as cloth rather than as wolf skin. So it's maybe been completely lined, a little bit like the cloak itself. Looking for obviously a super smooth coat of this red black mix to use as our base. I said a minute ago you could do all of what we're going to do with the, to the cloak if you wanted with literally just a black and red, but I brought out three pots of paint. The third one is a ink from Scale 75. And it's a really crazy uh, part of our range, which I, I absolutely think is brilliant if used correctly. If used wrongly, it, it's a fucking nightmare. It's an unmitigated disaster to do anything with if you do. But if you use it right, <laughs> Rocky, I, I wasn't going to mention it. If you use it right, then it really adds a lot to your your painting. Depending on what it is you're doing, obviously. So it's a product from their ink intensity range. So just like the artist ink that we use, the Dala Rani stuff and the Liquitex stuff, it's basically something like that. With super, super fine pigment grind. But also loads of it. Crazy intensity. So you will get the most red of all reds with this. We're using Kador Red, which is an extremely bright, vibrant, and, and very vivid red. But this is really just going to knock it up a notch. So there you go. We've got a solid coat on all of that now, I think. Happy days. 
to the underside of this. Rocky, I can't believe you didn't paint Ragnar in sub-assemblies. Actually, that's a lie. I definitely can believe you didn't paint Ragnar in sub-assemblies. But I'll bet you wish you had. Can't wait to do the face. That's going to be a banging day to do the face. Of course, you'd be more accurate with the airbrush. Well, good job we covered that last stream, Matt. The last stream was all about airbrush accuracy and how you can airbrush anything regardless of whether it's been painted or not in sub-assemblies. Whether it's got one bit next to it that's fully finished and the next bit is we can airbrush. Shows you how you can do that. Right, now we're going in with some of that dirty paint water still left in the airbrush. So we're not going with a pure Kador red. Paint the armor on Wolfram today, only one mistake. Nice, brother. Let's see how dark this is in comparison to what we want it to be. I need to drop just the tiniest bit more black into that. Let's have a look on the palette. No, that's looking good. That's looking good. Cool beans. So let's go to our cloak again. Now on here. We've obviously got loads of these cool little recesses. We want to keep those nice and dark. So we're trying to avoid those with the airbrush. But all of these really, really nice, wide, flat areas that are just begging out for a strong highlight. They've absolutely got to be hit with this red. On this little um, what, dog leg, I guess, I'm going to leave the transition to come from the darkest point where it joins the cape to the lightest point out by the port. So we'll start with that. Work in from the front. Staying thin. Mm -hmm. Now you've got this down on the model. I think we do need to add a little more black into this. So he's going to pop in a little bit more flow improver. A drop of black. So, who's been doing some hobby today? What have you guys been up to? Hobo Jay, I know you must have been doing some painting. Still working on your mad scientist. of this is just to build that highlight a little bit slower give it a much smoother gradient so by the time it really gets to its highest point it pops out crazy crazy amount in this pass we're going to get almost everything we're just going to avoid those deepest recesses like we said earlier on uh, paint some stormcast nice uh, Chima says, I'm borrowing an airbrush from a friend for a while, time to pay some actual attention. Absolutely, dude. Getting some Blackstone Fortress painted. I love painting that set. Did that as a commission for a guy called John, who's a really good dude. One of the nicest people I've met. Very interesting guy as well. He's an uh, air traffic controller. So he's got some stories. Now you'll notice we are turning the Mini away from us here, and that's so we don't get any overspray in this gap. We'll end up with a little in a second when we come around to another angle to have to hit this from. But for now, let's try and preserve that shadow as much as possible. The Blackstone Fortress was fucking brilliant to paint. Heck, you're doing nothing. Well, your, your whip is right here, brother. You don't need to paint. Got me for that night. Uh, Dread Scene, nearly giving myself a stroke trying to wet blend warm greys. <laughs> have fun. Have fun. Wet blending is one of those things that takes a long ass time. To, to get get going and, and be comfortable with but it does pay off so you know you've got that uh demon badge just started doing a little bit more of my rubric means so i was watching the stream not got much done at all that's fine you're still watching that's that's okay dude 
Uh, Hertz is doing Ragnar. Awesome. We're both doing Ragnar. And A Cold, Erish and Yellow, Hazard Stripes on the Knight Chainswords. Yes. All of the yes. Hazard Stripes on Knights. I mean, what kind of crazy man would do that? It's a never been done before concept, I'm sure. I love Hazard Stripes. And knights are clearly one of the best things to put Hazard Stripes on. They're super hazardous. Right, so now we're trying to preserve this gap by airbrushing past the mini to allow the overspray only to hit this area. Now so we're going to get a nice bright red coming through whilst also retaining our shadows. Now we're going to flip this the other way so we can start hitting this area while still preserving that shadow using this to essentially mask off our airbrush spray. DK, how you doing, Matt? I, I, I do warn you, though, Acold, that uh, painting hazard stripes on knights is how you generally get second in best painting. <laughs> Actually, well, to be fair, we've, we've done very well. We've, we've got several firsts, but... Did the Alliance open? God damn, if I hadn't voted for Gear... I loved his army though, it was super good. It was super, super good. What a talented dude that guy is. Right, let's start working this side of the cake. So we're just avoiding the very lowest point, the darkest recesses of these creases now. So we'll hit all of that, but we won't go inside the cloak this time. Just get in that top side. And then we'll do a little bit more in here. We want this to stand out quite nicely. So we won't go further into the cloak, but we'll do this one bit on the outside. Get loads in there. It really is, dude. This chaos stuff is always always on point. His orcs were amazing. I love watching uh, our game. Such a really nice visual game to have. And like both both of our armies nominated in the top three. In fact, as joint second for best painted, that was the prettiest table in the place. Right. There we go. So that's about as far as we're going to go with this mix. Just got a little bit to do on here. Same as on the other one. We'll leave the darkest recess as to where it joins the armor. And have this come out at the front. To be the brighter of our reds. Just going to dry it down with the airbrush a little bit. And then bring in a little bit more paint right towards the end. Cool. So that's starting to look nice and bright on camera, but in reality, that's still very, very dark. Now we're going to flush this, and we're just going to use what the dregs are left in there. So there's still a little of that previous color. Now we're going to start adding in just a load of red to it, though. So then we'll black in the pot, just red. He says immediately picking up the black, which was dumb. Uh, Chima says, I'm hoping to get my Harlequins at least nominated this time. Nice, dude. These are the Harlequins that aren't Harlequins, right? The Grots. Little Orcaquins. Harley Orcs? What did, you, what did you call the army? And can anyone tell me where, where the Alliance Open is this time? Because I was having a conversation with uh, a friend of mine, Mark Cromberholm, who is one of the guys that I'm going to Vegas with. And he said it was in Rotterdam. And I could could have sworn it wasn't. But I haven't, I haven't looked at the tournament pack. Okay. Well, maybe. Ever yeah, slightly too bright. But we'll just keep it nice and thin. And do several passes. It's in Utrecht. That, that's what I thought. Sarah! How you doing? We're doing great. We're playing Ragnar! 
Not the one from Vikings, and not like Ragnar. He's not a farmer. He's the Wolf Lord. So we've done yellow already, now we're doing red. We're getting all the bright colors done on today's stream. So because this is a very bright version of this red, just a little bit off from pure Kador red. Be very careful with our airbrush and just feathering it in. The reason behind that is because you don't get full opacity with one pass of paint through the airbrush, you can use the same color to highlight several times with before you need to take the next step with it. So by just being careful, we're gonna end up with a much more bright and vivid red here than we will say at this point on his cloak. And all of that highlight will have been with the same color. That means we're gonna get a really nice solid mid-tone red throughout this, ready for our super, super vivid highlights to go down before we start adding in any kind of washes, any kind of recess shading, and of course, any brushed highlights. So I'm just gonna cover up if possible. Not without holding the mini. Okay, cool. We'll just have to be careful then. I'm just going to do that so we can try and avoid some of the overspray. Bring those reds in now, right up on this edge of his cloak. So we did a lot of this on the last stream. Precision airbrushing, just making sure we're only hitting the areas we want to. And you can see that the method that we're doing here, we're just doing stop, start, pass, one at a time. We're not holding down the air, going backwards and forwards over something. And the reason behind that is when you are letting up the air, whilst your thumb or finger, in your case, comes off the trigger in a very, very quick motion for you, remember that, that, that needle still takes time, a very small amount of time, but takes time to relocate back in that nozzle properly and stop the paint flowing. Which means you will still get just a little bit of feathering on the way out, and that's why you want to do it. If you just held the trigger down and went backwards and forwards, what you'd end up with is as you come this way and you'd stop before you go back up, you'd end up with a dark, uh, well, in this case brighter, but usually a darker if you're doing shadowing, uh, sort of stain here, where that bit got hit twice, and the same here. So we're doing constant, one at a time, passes with the airbrush, just to ensure that we get a nice fade from this brighter red into our darker red. And you can see just how bright this is starting to get. It takes several passes. We're probably looking at about 10 actual passes with the airbrush before we get that red to be in this vibrant. But obviously, take a look at the difference between this bit right here and this bit right here. But then as you look along the pathway of that cape, that is a very smooth transition from the dark all the way into that. So let's continue on the other side of his cape. I'm not entirely certain how much of this is visible. I know this is very visible. Don't know how much of it this is, but because of that, we'll just pay it all the attention. Make sure we're not missing any highlights later on. Feathering a bit more in on the edge there. Super bright. Might start working here. Got a little bit of a blockage, which just managed to clear. Again, still trying to preserve a lot of those shadows. So tilting the mini as much or as little as you need to ensure that you're not getting any airbrush spray and the overspray into some of these much darker recesses, especially like this one where we've got here, 
and this one we really want to make a feature of this element of the cloak. Quick question, when doing green flames, would it look better the darker at the bottom or the top, since red flames are darker at the top, right? Depends on what on. Um, let's say you've got something that is a very bright colour anyway, if you then have the bright bit at the bottom and the darker bit at the top, it sort of bleeds one into the other. If you switch it around and you've got a darker, a lighter coloured mini, and you put the dark line in, then there's that noticeable gap before you then start to go into the brighter of the flame. Equally, if you've got a dark coloured mini, maybe you want to put the dark bit at the top, so you've got, again, that border in there with that brighter colour. So it's very situational, mate. End of the day, it's magic fire. If it's green, or it's psychic fire, or it's warp fire, which is magic fire, let's be honest. So you can do whatever you want with it. There, there are no rules in terms of um, like the the setting that it's in as to how your fire must be done. All right, so now we're starting to work on this top highlight. I'm holding the mini so that the edge of this cloak protects this crease for me, though. Just starting to build that up, mate. Bringing that red up. Nice and vibrant. So you've got that bit super red, and as we tilt it, we've got that really, really dark crease in both sides of that. Now we're working from this side to do essentially the same, but to the crease right there at the end. Let's get to this point. And the reason I'm going to do this point before we start working the crease is because this is going to help me establish a value here where it's going to be at its brightest that I can't reach anywhere else. Otherwise, we'd end up with two of the brightest spot, and that obviously won't work. Peckish, there's absolutely, absolutely no, no, no copper anyway. It's just magic. It's just magic, man. Fish, same to you. Suspend your disbelief. It's just magic. God, where's the romance in your souls? You see, by repeatedly following that sort of feathering motion with the airbrush, we're getting that super smooth gradient. Now I'm going to flip this around this way, so we hit the lower part of this curve. That's still too dark. We don't want to get it all into the recess, though, so we're going to tilt the model even further, so that we're only allowing ourselves to that one side. And we need to come from this side downwards, because that's the brightest point. Same as when you're doing glazes, but obviously in reverse. When you glaze with a brush, you're drawing the brush towards the bright point. Glaze with an airbrush, you're brushing it away from that brightest point. Edit. Magic. It's magic. There you go. Kane, Kane Rost. Not Kane Frost. Kane Rost. Thank you for that follow. Welcome to the stream, dude. How's it going? There you go. So... Starting to really get that red picked up now. Now you've just got to do the top side of the cake. We've done some of it here. We need to get all of this bit done. And of course, that great big spike of it. In fact, before we do that, let's just do this little bit of red on the old doggy hand. This so we can be a little bit more careful off of there because I really worry about preserving this. I'm less worried about that. So. We'll only get this as good as we can get it without any effect here. Supervised the demolition site in wrong corner. When we put it at the old floor, so we just go to ICI and used it to tip a phosphorus based material. And the site says that the but Oh shit. Brilliant. It's 
selfish, you know, anyone you can walk away from. Right, now let's start hitting these areas. So work on this nice big point with these creases. You can be a little bit less, you need to go back and forth a lot because we've got such a small area to highlight. So with things like this, we're looking to get the highlight along the length of the, the bit of cloth, right? Let's go right in. So the highlight starts here and it sort of fuzzes out a bit here and really terminates kind of there. With these bits, the highlight you're looking for is the width, not the length. So you can be a little bit easier going with the airbrush, not have to constantly keep doing that continual feathering motion. You can just bring that in and out width-wise. Hit that one, we'll hit this one by itself. We'll work a little closer now so we get a slightly narrower cone of air hitting that. So, and then we're just going to nick the outside edge of all of this. So this is an edge highlight with an airbrush. It's very possible. See? Just need to be careful with it. Now I can, that's a little bit blown out because it's so shiny, but if I just give it a bit more background, you can see it just got the edge highlight of the lower part of that cake. And what a beautiful red this is turning out to be. Still got two highlights of airbrush work to do. We're at 20 past 10, we've got stacks of time. This one, easiest highlight ever. Bam, kind of done, sorted. Right, gonna flush that out. Gonna flush the airbrush out, give it a good rinse out. So the next highlight is gonna be Cadal Red by itself. That still had a little bit of what was left in the pot. So there was a little bit of black, that kind of darkish reddy brown that we had mixed up, all in with that. We wanna make sure there's none of that left now. So rinsing out the cup of the airbrush will also backflow the airbrush a couple of times to make sure there's none of it left in the tip, so in that airbrush nozzle, get all of that out of there that we can. And then we go in with just that red. And you could miss this step if you wanted to. So you could go directly from the last highlight that we've just done straight into pure Cade or Red. This is going to be a display model. This is something that you need to give that extra bit of care and attention to because this is something that's not really going to see the battlefield very much. It's something that's going to see a lot of a shelf. Be a prominent place. May as well go the extra Monty. And for the extra time it's going to take us, we're really only looking at a couple of minutes because we're streaming it. You'd be looking at a minute or less if you were. So you may as well add this step in. The airbrush already saves us so much time when we're doing a blend like this. If we'd done, for instance, this sword, and we'd done that by hand, let's, let's use this hand so it stands out a little bit more. We'd done that fade, the yellow through to orange by hand, that would have taken probably all stream to get that nice and smooth and, and looking beautiful. We did that in about 25 minutes. So we've already saved, essentially at that point, two and a half hours. We're now saving even more time painting this. So once again, we'll start with this. It's gonna be between these two, the brightest points of the cake. So we'll start here to establish our maximum possible value of this red. And that is super, super red. So now we're keeping the end of our highlight to here. So whereas before it was feathering up to about there, now we're bringing it much further down the cape. Sword fade looks familiar, good. It should look a little bit like the box art. Not exactly like, 
a little bit. So the underside here, kind of doing that fuzzing motion, but essentially all we're really doing is making sure our highlights are at the very far edge of this cloak and really emphasizing that red. Still looking a little bit orange on camera, but that's mostly because it's just wet. It's just got that sheen to it. This is an absolutely beautiful red. Here, because we've got such a long highlight to do, are using that feathering motion again. And what I'm hoping to do, looks like we're achieving it, is just to get a small edge highlight just on the edge of this with the airbrush. For no other reason than I just want a little extra bit of red just on there. So it's not all the one transition, there's that transition down, there's that transition up as well. Extra points of contrast, extra points of cool. It's all about those cool points, guys. We'll start at the top over here. Bring that up a little bit more. Coming from this angle. Just trying to hit the middle of that. So again, tilt the mini to be sure that you can only hit certain parts of it yeah so we've still got these really dark creases here this is exactly what we want just gonna bring this up a little bit more and we'll start working up here tiny amount of paint coming out the uh, out the airbrush plenty of air pressure because we're working distant smallest amount of paint just so we've got all of that control go back down this way just get a little bit more red into this corner like so you can see possibly that most of what we're painting is well past the minute it's just that little bit of overspray which is getting it come in from this side just get a little highlight right there the only reason I'm doing that is because it's right next to what will be something kind of dark here anyway so because we want that contrast in as many places as possible these will be a dark brown which obviously is going to be right next to sorry I'll slide off uh, right next to a dark brown so we may as well bring this bit up a little bit more to the red uh, surrealness thank you for that follow and welcome hope you're having fun so by doing that there we can keep this really really dark apart from this bit, which is, of course is an armor plate, which is super irritating, by the way. Uh, and it won't get anything lost. Everything will still stay nice and stood out. You'll get plenty of, uh, of contrast going on there. And that contrast is what makes things interesting. Let's get the tip of this piece of his cape. And then again, on the back, just get the tips of those creases. And on this one, we'll just do a little of that end. So whereas before, we did a full edge highlight all the way down this crease, this time we've only done the top sort of third or so of that. Right, now we're going to flush some of that out. We don't need very much for the next step at all and the next step is involving this intensity red or sorry ink tense red we pop this right next to the Kador red you'll see there's not a whole lot of difference in it but this is definitely a lot more of that pure red than this and the power that this stuff has is mental now i've not added any more flow improver to the pot just yet i want to see what this is like once we've mixed it in because this is an ink it's very thin just going to pop two drops of that in. So not much at all. Less definitely the uh, the best way for stuff like this. 
And we're now at the point where we cannot get any more red than this red. This is the reddest of all reds. In fact, what we will do, just to see if it makes any difference. Oh yeah. Just change that light to the colder hue and now that red really stands out a little bit more. And if I'm honest, I find it's much easier to paint by. So. Right, that is thin enough. So let's work on our brightest point, which is just here. Just looking to hit the very end of it. Around that corner a little bit just to get up and over there to give that the brightest possible bit of red we can get. Rocky! Has it been 40 months already? Apparently it has, dude. Apparently it has. Thank you very much, dude. Let's get some hype for Rocky. Full on old schooler right there. If you've got both sets of those love hand hearts, get them in the stream for the guy. Absolute boss. Can you do me a favor tomorrow, Rock? Because I'm going to forget, because I'm fucking terrible, and I apologize for this. But can you message me, and we'll start talking about your Magnus? So I've got some ideas. I've got plenty of ideas for it. But I want to start running them by you, so I can keep thinking of things between now and September to ensure that we are going to give you the absolute best, best Magnus. 40 months, you still haven't paid any fucking fist scratch that in that case you've got to paint a fist before I start getting that Magnus done got to get one finished well no rushed paint job just got to get one finished that's the deal brother take it or leave it is that a euphemism your Magnus show me your Magnus sir no you dirty bastard Nearly, nearly lost that to some spider webbing. Dark Artisan! Dude! How you doing, brother? Everybody, get some hype in the stream. This guy is a boss. Check him out on YouTube as well. I would have thought you'd be hard at work with a 9th edition battle report, sir. Not the brother. Brother, you are way too modest. Way too modest. How's it going, man? What were you streaming? Paint the box set like a mofo. I'll bet you are. I'll bet you are. What's your favorite thing from it so far? Other than, of course, the rule book. Everybody, this guy, I was watching his battle reports years ago. Years and years ago. He's a good dude. He's good people. Bikes, but Destroyer Lord is amazing. Oh, yes. We're painting that Destroyer Lord, actually, on stream. Noise Marine! What up? How you doing? Thank you for that follow. Yeah, we're going to be painting that Destroyer Lord on stream on the launch weekend. So on the 25th of... July. Why was that the hard part in that sentence? The fucking date, we nailed it, but the month I bought we're going to paint both the Scorpeth Lord and the Judicia. We're going to raffle them off. In fact, let's take a quick break from the painting. A quick chat about that. Exclamation point Judy in the chat and exclamation point score in the chat. We are doing a paint job of the community's choice. You guys, as a group, have decided that these are the two minis 
one from each faction you wanted to see me paint. How we're going to paint them, that's all up to you. So currently, for the Scorpeth Lord, let's go check out the results. Exclamation point SKOR in the chat to vote. The winner, but only by two votes. And we've still got another week to run on this. So everyone has a chance to vote. Current leader by one vote. Who? Who? It's getting hot at the top. Is the got fucked up at a 90s rave crons. Which is the same colour scheme that Loza paints hers in. That's up by one vote. Following it in, in second, is my favourite colour scheme. Oh, tied for first! Get in. Get in. Tied for first. The colour scheme I want to paint it in. Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim. Big fucking robots unite. Oh, and it's in the lead now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, those are the two. Coming in third... The blue crons, the frozen crons, I like it. But that's the Scorpeth Lord. If you guys want to vote on the Judicia, exclamation point Judy in the chat. Let's follow that link quickly. So there's both of these. I haven't voted on yet. I get a swing vote just in case. But on the results, we're currently looking at. Ooh, the Ultramarine still holding first place spot. 14 votes. Sons of Medusa, which I really like actually. Sons of Medusa were my first 40k army when I got back into the, the hobby because I couldn't be asked to paint the Death Guard bone and green. I kind of wanted Death Guard, so it went black and green. Turns out there was a chapter. Who knew? The Sons of Medusa, they're one of my favourites. They're in second as well. So I am really liking both of these polls. Now, when we do these giveaways, not only... Well, raffle, sorry. When we do this raffle, not only will the winner get to choose which of these two minis they want to take home, but we are also going to give them the rest of that faction from the box thrown in brand new on sprue for free. The second place winner gets the other mini that we've painted. And the rest of that faction too. So if you win and you want the Judicia, you get all of the Space Marines. If you want Scorpeth Lord, you get all of the Necrons. That's a big old prize to have come the 25th. We're going to do stream all weekend. As usual, we'll start at 10am UK time on both days. They will both be finished in that weekend we've done some ambitious things we did a bust in a day we did chaos night in a weekend we did an entire motherfucking nurgle demon army right here 118 minis 48 hours got that shit done but now we're painting two character models to a high standard in two streams I think that's the toughest challenge yet. I'm not going to lie. We don't have lots of big armor panels and a skeleton like the knight had. We don't have it, but it's just throw inks and oil washes and stuff like the No Demon Army had. We need to be on point. And we're painting one of these guys at least majority black armor. And that is an absolute bastard to do. So, get your votes in. Exclamation point duty. Exclamation point score. Choose the colour scheme for the mini that you might be taking home. It's going to be a fun weekend. It's going to be a very fun weekend. And I also may get absolutely fuck or sleep. But we'll see how we get on, right? I can only go so insane. So here we are now. Getting the final passes on this red. And this is... Oh, so red. This is the reddest of all reds. There are many reds like it, but this one is ours. And it's the best one. And the reddest one. 
nearly run out of paint in the airbrush, but come on, just a little bit more. I just need to do this one. There we go. Cool beans. So that's all the red done. Notice how on both those last two, we didn't do anything on a little poor bit underneath. It's going to be a shadow. Don't want to highlight on that. Certainly don't want it that bright. That's that's taking that red and knocking it up an arch. There we go. Right. We've still got, call it 45-ish minutes of paint time before we go into the whip. So what can we do in that 45 minutes? I don't want to start work on the uh, fur just yet because I want to get a little brush work done on that so we don't have to airbrush very close to our red here so we can just get a lot of this going on safely. Don't want to do the armor because that's going to take a while. We could base coat the armor at least. Maybe not get all the highlights, but let's see how far we get with that. Muluk, thank you for that follow and welcome. Right, we're going to knock off the compressor for a sec. Pop that to one side. Let me go back to our sword hand. So this was the first thing that we painted. And the reason behind it is because we're going to paint this bit in black. We're going to mask off all of this. And then we're going to spray all of this with the airbrush. So first thing we need to do, varnish it. Nope, got one lurking in there. Thought I was going to have to break out a fresh can. That's always a... Uh, it's always a day where I'm like, have I got enough of this? Do I have at least three cans left? If the answer is no, I don't have enough of this. So what we're going to do is going to varnish everything that we've airbrushed so far. So we'll grab the hairdryer out. Just make sure that the red is all nicely cured. Set down. Now if you use a quality varnish, we're using our Testers Dull Coat. This stuff is the absolute legitimate best spray varnish you can get your hands on. If you use a quality varnish, you can do it several times throughout the project. You don't just need to do a varnish at the very end. Think of the varnish being put down. It's like a save button. We're putting a clear layer over what we've got here to protect it from ourselves at this point. Totally didn't nearly drop it. Now, I strongly suggest as well that when you use this stuff, you do it outdoors. Hicko, there is a formula for this that is uh, European. So the American version of this contains something that we can't have over here. The European version of it obviously doesn't. But because of that, it's also marketed as two different names. And I've forgotten what the other name for this is in Europe. But you may be able to find it underneath that name. So if you can find out what that name is, you can maybe look for it that way. But it is the absolute best, best varnish you could have. So I'm just going to dry that down. Not too worried about drying it on the sword, not just yet. That'll cure naturally. Just making sure we've got that dry on the hand start laying down our base coats. Now, peckish. Assuming you're still there. We're going for the very traditional blue-gray for this, right? So we'd be looking at maybe a Fenrisian gray as our final highlight. Which means we could start with I either start with rust grey as our darkest tone, but there's not enough contrast between those two. So let's go dark. Let's go real dark. Let's use the fang. 
We could start with that, work this up and leave just that in the recesses. Or we could even do this all over and do this as kind of like an undershade. That's a possibility, actually. Bring in some undershade work. Zenith with that. Highlight up with that. That could work. We could deal with that. Is that my old Sasea Tau colours? Space doggos, man. Damn space doggos. Right, I'm going to paint that hand black. Now, why am I painting that black? I'm going to airbrush over it anyway, right? Well, yeah, I am, but it's an important model. Again, we go back to that whole thing about this is a display model. This is something that you will put on a shelf to look at much more than you will put on a gaming table. So why are we going to take the extra mile with some of these steps? So I've just got this black. We've thinned it down. So we've got almost a glaze. And we'll do two passes with this. I don't care. We're not getting good coverage right now. Because we will do by the time that everything's set. Thanks to France. The community here still not really about varnishes. Most of the time we don't apply it. Dares give you some advice early. Fair enough, dude. Uh, whether the community is is some like a community that uses varnish or not, I still very strongly suggest it. I spend between 40 and 50 hours a week, almost every week, doing some painting. Uh, mostly commission stuff. Or almost all of that is commission stuff, in fact. Um, I don't want my client to pay me what is not an insignificant amount of money, I, I won't lie to you, to have some minis that only really look good for a couple of months because somebody picked one up and accidentally scraped some paint off and so on and so forth. I wouldn't want to, on my own minis either, if I went to an event and somebody picked up one of my nights to judge it for painting and took some, some paint off, again, same same problem. Right? Uh, Oh god, here we go. The Dominus Weekend Stream, hour 30. After painting both minis at almost completion, Jay's lack of sleep seems to have given him boundless self-confidence. There's therefore an actual redo both models, this time reversing the schemes, creating an Ultramarine Dynasty and 90s Rave chapter. His newfound confidence leases him... Leases... Le I think that's maybe leaves. Leaves him dead to the chat, imploring to stay... Imploring to stay see on target. Who's tired at this point? Who's tired? Peckish, you're back. This is good. I was talking to you a second ago. We're going traditional blue space doggos, right? So we've got Fenrisian grey, we've got rust grey, and we're thinking of doing a undershade, so coming up from underneath on the minis with the fang. So we'll do an undershade of that, a zenithal of that, and then we'll work the highlights in this way around. Right, quickly dry that down. I didn't think we were going to get that much further than the sword. Turns out, you were wrong. This is where that uh, boundless self-confidence starts that Crown Blade's talking about right now. That and Stacy. Who's Stacy? I know who Stacy's mom is. She's got it going on. She's all I want and I've waited for so long. Well done, Peckish. Well done. Uh, Angel of the Blood. I have to ask, mate, is there a filter on the camera or are you, in fact, painting in a multicolored room that doesn't seem well lit? So if you mean this part, this part is not well lit. We've got one light there that points down, one light there that points down, because when we got the new camera set up, which is there, what we didn't think about was the kitchen light, which is there. <laughs> and I basically get what looks like a penis shape shadow on the middle of my forehead <laughs> the background light just changes through 
So at the moment it's pink, it'll go through like cyan and um, red and blue and all the other colors. Um, but yeah. Yeah, the, the painting station, this bit is really well lit. Really well lit. But, dear God. Can't have any other lights on. Please turn that light on. Hell no. Hell no. We got used to, to painting with that off for a reason, brother. Do you have a light loop? No, I don't. I, I could get one. The, the issue is, is that that would then have to be another light that is in this area. And it would have to be forward of the camera. So the camera, you can see the lens is right there to give me that vertical, well, not quite vertical, it's ever so slightly pointed back towards the desk. Uh, and because of that, then end up with a extra thing sort of stuck out here, blasting light this way. And I, I don't need that. You don't need to see, this is not the important part. I used to tell people, I have a mohawk to draw attention away from the face and a beard to cover the rest of it. That, that hasn't changed. That's, that's still the way we look at things. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to cover up the bottom of the sword. Right? We're going to go right around the uh, hilt, I think this is. As Kenny would say, I'm not a sword scientist. But yeah, you guys, you don't need to see my face. You don't need to see the face at all, but it's useful when I'm explaining things because I talk with my hands quite a lot. And no, I don't mean giving somebody the finger. You know, the bird. I did watch Top Gun the other day, again, and I fucking loved it. <laughs> Mate, lockdown has not been kind, but my boobs aren't quite that big. Alright? <laughs> Although we're like a one good pizza away from that being a reality. So just some quick Tamiya tape to cover up the majority of the sword. We've wrapped it in such a way that when we're spraying downwards at the model, it can't seat back up here. Now when we do have our undershade bit, we'll just hold the sword like so, so that this area that we're applying the undershade to can't put any of that uh, blue-gray up onto the sword. To communicate internationally. That's right, international relations, you know, one of those. <laughs> Do you remember the name of Iceman's wingman? Um, yeah, Slider. Although really, he could be my wingman. Totally not Smithy. <laughs> thank you for the follow. And Dean Paints also, thank you for the follow too. Y you're not the only one. No. No. But we might be the only two. So. <laughs> right. So. Never done this before. I'm going to give it a shot. Why not? That needs paint, that needs paint, you don't need paint, you, technically speaking, do, that's a shoulder pad, but mm, we're not going to airbrush that. Similarly, we're not going to airbrush like that. It's not worth it, don't do it. I was literally just thinking I could just airbrush around here and just hit the back side of the shoulder pad, but nope, nope, let's, let's not. Let's not do that. Uh, and this could be airbrushed. This tiny bit here. And if I'm honest, I think we will. But we're not going to touch this at all. That will be base coated quickly and then uh, so and so. I, I neither have an Amazon wish list or an OnlyFans. And there's good reasons for both of those things. I think I anyone that fucking 
basically prostitutes themselves over the internet for that. He's in dire need of a talking to. Or at. Iceman was Val Kilmer, yes. It is a brilliant, brilliant film though. I love it. The sequel's gonna be trash. The sequel might be Might be fucking terrible. <laughs> I just It's gonna be one of those things where you're like, oh what have you done? What have you done? You're pissing on its grave right now with this. Ba Batman was Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer was the second worst actor to have played Batman. Did anyone guess the first? Also, number three might surprise you. So, this is a... It's not a Zenithal at all, but I ended up calling it this by accident. It sticks in my head. We do an airbrush shadow. So normally we do a Zenithal highlight where you come in from the top, right? We're gonna do it the other way around. So we're gonna do a shadow coat using the airbrush. I'm gonna spray this, uh, was it the fang on from underneath. This is gonna start establishing some shadows on the model for us. Dude, I, I was, I watched that film at its time. It was shit. So. The worst Batman was, of course, George Clooney. The second worst was Val Kilmer. And the third worst Batman, I know I'm not including Adam West from back in the day because that just feels unfair. The third worst Batman was Christian Bale. I am Batman. Swear to me! Fuck. Fuck. Could not. C could not support that. Bad Batman, good movies. The movies are fine. The movies are fine. But the hero is outshone by the villain every single step of the way. Now to get this leg, I have to come in at the side, which I don't really want to do. I'd rather just keep this from underneath. But still, we're going to end up covering most of that up as it's nearly vertical using our brighter colors. All this is going to do is establish a nice strong set of shadows for Raggy to have. So from this side, very blue. From this side, it's no blue. No blue. Best Joker was not Jack Nicholson, I'm afraid. It, uh, the whole nursey baby kind of Joker. No, I, I didn't like that. The, the best Joker was Ledger. I've, I've got to give it to him. Although I did not like Hakeem Phoenix's version. Uh, it's, that got massively overhyped as far as I'm concerned. Uh, wasn't a huge fan. It was an okay film, but I haven't even given it a second thought since until this moment. So that kind of tells you where I am with it. Get a little bit more on this back leg. It's kind of hard to get the shadows on there just because it's so vertical, but just enforce those. Best Joker, of course, Mark Hamill. No, so Mark Hamill was the best voice of a Joker, but he never actually played the Joker. Um, and if we bring cartoon stuff into things, then, you know, that, that's, that's a, an entirely different. Um, a different arena, you know. It's it's unfair to make those comparisons because the best Bane, if we bring that into a comparison, was definitely not the dude in the film. I love Tom Hardy; he's great. He's done loads of cool films that I enjoyed. 
but no. You were born in the darkness. Oi. 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 Joke film was too hype for nothing. It's a Batman. I'm a Batman fan in comics only. That joke was a kid version. Fair. I just. Meh. Meh. It all seemed a bit like Fight Club. I'm like, I've seen this movie before. So. The, the best thing about the Adam West stuff. Kano! Dude, thank you for that, sup. I like to think that my thoughts on Batman led you to that. But the best thing about the Adam West Batman stuff was the uh, climbing up the wall on the outside of a building that he always used to do, where they would go along the floor, but the camera would be turned on its side. That that was actual genius from back in the day, right there. Troy Baker is a good Joker voice. I don't actually know who that is. Right, here's where we're going to be careful. So last room, remember we talked all about airbrush accuracy. This has never been more important than right now because whilst on those crons, fixing that bone was easy, fixing this red is not easy. So, have to make sure that we don't allow any of this paint on the red. Now some of you may be asking, what the fuck are you doing with the airbrush here then? Well, I can paint this with the airbrush because I've spent hours and hours and hours fucking around with it. So I'm going to. But I also just want to make sure that all of the pieces of Russ's armor do actually match up. So we'll even highlight this with the airbrush as well. This is one of the reasons why we used our sort of save game style apply some varnish. It's easy to clean the, that paint off if it gets on the varnish. But it also gives us our first look at what the armor's going to look like against the cape. Comrade Cern, what up, dude? Okay, so now I'm going to go for the top down coat. I'm going to leave a little bit of that the fang in the cup there. So you've probably got a drop or two of that in there. You mean it's taxi driver? That's what, well, yeah. But it was the whole. Um, it's all in your head kind of thing. It's like this is, it's, it's just gonna, it's gonna be that, isn't it? And then lo and behold, it, it was that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, good shake. We've got Russ Gray. Here we go. We're at 11 o'clock. I wanna get the armor highlights put down tonight, which means the whip might either be delayed or potentially non-existent, depending on how long this takes. I wasn't expecting to get this far, but now we've started this, I don't want to stop it. I want to get all of the armor highlights that we're going to do with the airbrush laid down today, just so we're not going to try and remix a color to then build a highlight off of it. So we've left a little bit of the fang in the airbrush just to darken down our rust gray a little. And this is going to be our top down base coat. So we're not at our mid-tone yet. Just the base coat. So we've got the darker blue from there. Let's flick this back over to the warmer light just so we get a little bit better white balance. There you, go. you can see that a little clearer now. We've just got the black on the top. Now we're going to start working zenithly, so we're going to come in from the top. Favourite Batman villain? Mine is Freeze. Not the mutilated, unfunny army version, but more along the animated version. The animated version of Freeze was cool. That was when he was kind of slim, right? Uh, my favourite Batman villain is... What's his fucking name? Shit. Hush. That's it. Was it Hush? I'm sure it was called Hush. I read a comic book. It was a year-long uh, Batman series to get to the end of it. Ace Thunderball, thank you for that follow. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it was Hush, was the name of the villain. And it was basically um, one of the Robins, uh, Jason Todd, as a bad guy. And I thought that was that was really cool. It's the only Batman comic I've ever read 
that was being brought out at the time I was reading it. So I read things like Batman Year One, which was fucking Mark Miller's absolute seminal work as far as I'm concerned. That was that was crazily, crazily good. I loved that. Loved the art style. Um, I had a audio uh, book of a Batman comic, which was really, really good. Uh, Dark Knight Returns, or the Dark Knight, or something. Basically, Batman gets uh, like his back broken by Bane, and then there's Azazel in the book as well, um, and it all becomes this massive showdown at the end. It, that was fucking sick. That was super. Red Hood. That could be it. Killing Joke. So I, I've read the Killing Joke. Oh fuck! I realised we just forgot this. Okay, we'll have to come back in with the shadows at the end, but that's a pain in the butt. Might have to just glaze those in afterwards, but... Damn it. I thought there was something I was missing. Uh, Hush is a guy who goes, gets who's look like Bruce, and then goes pretends to crime just him. Okay, maybe it was just a villain in that comic. Yeah, I kind of like Clayface as well. I thought he was good in the com in the cartoon. Um, he's one of the, the ones that I remember the most. But yeah, I was always, always more of a Marvel guy. So growing up, I was all about Spider-Man, the X-Men. Wolverine was my absolute fucking hero. Love that guy. Punisher, Frank Castle is absolutely, clearly fucking mental, but just such a great character. Court of Owls, uh, I don't remember that, but Raz, yeah, yeah. Al Goose. Did always like Poison Ivy because she was always mental, but it was the right side of mental. It wasn't like the gibbering, cackling in a corner and giggling at invisible demons. It was just she had a cause, and she had very few uh, like scruples about how she was going to get uh, to, to her sort of end goal for that. But because everything she did, she could justify to herself. I, I like that in villains. They, they need to be, need to have their own cause and to be working for a particular thing. And she always had that, so that was cool. Right, let's just check this out from the underside. That is nice and dark. It does start to come into a nice brighter blue, which is obviously going to be our base coat. We'll work up to our mid-tone from there, so I'm okay with that. Where do we need to build, or start building at least, some more points of contrast? The knee pad at the front. Now, peckish. I need some quick Space Wolf's guidance. Do they have weird knee pads? Is this one of those cases where it's going to have to be yellow with a fucking crescent moon or something on it? It doesn't really have a knee pad per se. Just got shin guards that go up past his knees. He's got the little feather sword going on on that one. There is no actual knee pad. So, now you just start bringing in some highlights. So we've done a sort of all over Zenithal. And now we're going to really come in and pick out some of these areas. So while Package is looking, May as well just get a quick highlight on that anyway. And I know that these points that are facing downwards wouldn't really have a highlight on at all. Because that's not where the sun is, but that's not really how I paint. A lot of the time we obey the rules where it comes to light, especially when we're doing things like OSL. 
That is absolutely a must. Gotta have that light goes in straight lines only rule. But a lot of what I do breaks the rules because the only rule we really, really care about is the rule of cool. That's it. Not a feather light, feather sword, stylized wolf claw. That's definitely a feather. I don't care what anyone says. It's the feather sword. Also, what's wolf claw? Is that Russ's? No, it can't be Russ's sword because that was the emperor. No, he had the emperor's spear. I don't know. I'm not into furries. So you know, up the highlight a little bit on that belly. Top of the leg, we've got this thigh plate going on, so we'll just hit that with a few quick highlights. And then just before the knee as well. Look at the chest, obviously. Let's get those pecs. Keep a shadow underneath the uh, gorget, the collar. Uh, so if he doesn't have a defined knee pad, I didn't paint one, although it's ve vertical, zigzag, black and red, red on the left. Okay, he, hasn't, he literally doesn't have one, it's, it's just part of his shin. Um, but if that's what he's done and everything else, we can maybe find some way of working that in. By the way, his shoulder's yellow. Don't know if you had other designs on that, but now it's yellow. D did you have something else that should be on his shoulder? Because Ragnar's company's the yellow one, right? I, I know this much at least. Good. Good, good, good. Right, getting the wrist for there. We've got this little um, hip plate. Space Marines like to grow, grow old. Maybe they, uh, they've got those, so they need less hip replacements. And then we'll do the arm. Obviously, right up here, we'll get a load of the hand and the fingers that are outstretched as well. And they're going to be super bright because that's another big focal point on this mini is that outstretched reaching arm. Helps tell the story of what's going on in the scene. Uh, let's do from the back very little of this because the cape is going to be covering up most of it. But we'll hit a little down there on the back of his leg and there as well we'll just do a quick highlight on the butt because we're there so that's that part done let's have another look over the backpack let's get another pass going on right up here next to the doggo heads that's obviously one of the brightest points on the armor because it's the highest point on the armor we'll do a little around this uh diamond thing that we've got going on and then just at the bottom of the backpack power pack. Let's go and grab this and we'll just, just hit that bottom part there. I love this like red and blue hot and cold sensation thing we've got going on already. That's just a tiny amount of it. When this is all brought together. Mm. Yellow shoulder of black wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't spear the Emperor made it for him. apparently Russ hate Yeah, yeah, so, it, well, it was... I thought it was the Emperor spear that he gave to him. Um, but he did hate it. He kept uh, sort of leaving it lying around. And it found a way of, of returning to him. In Wolfsbane, one of the heresy books, he goes and has to do some attacking with it. And there's loads of occasions where he's just left it lying around. Uh, and as he leaves the room, someone goes, oh, by the way, like, uh, or he goes to another room and it, it, someone's taken it there for him to have or, or something. Right, going to flush again most of that through. We're going to grab a load more of our rust blue. And this time we've got very little of that fang colour in there. So we'll build that up and it'll be brighter than we've got currently. In fact, what we might do is one tiny drop of Fenrisian Grey in there as well. So, now we're working towards our mid-tone. We want our mid-tone to have an ever so slight amount of our highlight colour in there. So that when we start working with just the highlight colour, and maybe even just a tad brighter for some areas. Probably just with the brushed highlights for that though. 
then we've got something that really, really jumps out at you. Time are we at? We are at 10 past 11. So we probably won't get to doing the whip tonight because we've probably got 20 minutes or so work to do here. It takes us half 11, which is our finish time. So no whip this evening. Sorry about that, guys. But we got further with this than we wanted. And then we kind of went down the rabbit hole a little bit. And we, we do have to finish it. So it was this or we sort of finished the stream early, which I imagine none of you guys want. All right, let's do the hand bit before we forget. So, Megatron, dude, how you doing? So, on the wrist. Just working in from the back of that. We want to make sure we've got plenty of contrast here, because remember, this is the one that we forgot about earlier on, unfortunately. So we haven't got that shadow in at the bottom. Now, all we did to remedy that was be very, very careful with our passes of our mid-tone color. So a lot of that black still sh still stayed there, but we will probably just need to glaze in by hand a couple of little highlights. A couple of highlights, a couple of little shadows. Definitely didn't mean highlights. So with these, we're doing the highlights. That's where that came into my head then, obviously. Top of the hand, top of the wrist there, and you should be able to see we've definitely got a transition between that dark and that quite light blue. Let's do this bit quick just because it's so tiny. Again, just letting the overspray do our job for us. Bam, getting that up nice and bright. Do the backpack next because that's quite quick. So, again, the uppermost part of that will be the brightest part of it. Just start bringing in a highlight on top of the power pack area. I want to keep it kind of central so we've got some darker shadows either side of it because these will be painted gold. So we want a nice dark blue before we go in with a real bright good guy gold. Uh, if I'm just going to continue working on my Necron Warriors, nice dude. Very nice. The new ones or the old ones? Alright, so we've done a little bit of that. We're going to do a small highlight. But we're just going to hit these corners. So, when I do the brushed highlights, we'll be following this line of the backpack and this line. And on all the Primaris ones, there's this slight protrusion. It just goes upwards vertically. So I do a highlight here as well. So you end up with three highlights coming down to that area. I just realised you. Yeah, you could still see all that past the mohawk. Your three highlights come down to that area. So I just like to do a little airbrushed highlight just in both of those to soften some of that up a little bit. So be super careful. Tiniest, tiniest amount of paint. Loads of air to really keep that cone of, uh, of air and paint in tight. We'll hit the top section next to this gem. What colour did you do your gems, Beggish? And then again, just at the very bottom of his backpack. Red, cool, that's good, that's what we were going for. Lucky you said that, man. Right there. Back over to the main man himself. So we're gonna start at the feet and work upwards. This is probably gonna be the last highlight on the airbrush at the feet yet. Because we're gonna be working that brighter highlights only into the more uppermost uh, reaches of Raggy. McFisting red, grim. Right, we forgot some of the sides last highlight, but we just get a little one now on this uh, ankle support that Primary guys get. We'll do a little bit more to the knee from this side as well, because generally you're going to be looking at the model from that direction. So we don't really want the highlight to be 
central to the knee. We kind of want it to be just here towards the outside. Just going to carefully cover some of that up and we'll hit the top of his knee guard. I'm not touching the paint because that's still wet. We're just holding my finger near it so it's catching the overspray essentially. There we go. Thigh plate and then his little hip plate as well. And you can see it on that leg, and we will have to darken things down a little bit. You see on that leg, we've now got some really nice highlights starting to come through. Just got to do the rest of it. So from the back, we'll get the heel, we'll get a little sort of slim highlight just in here on the back of his calf. The cloak, again, will probably cover most of that, but just in case it doesn't, we may as well get that highlight down for all the time it took me. With the airbrush, everything's quite quick. You don't have to worry too much about wasted effort, whereas with a brush, everything takes a little bit more to, to do. Just more time involved. Um, brilliant. So essentially, the side of the comb, the side of a brush, the height of precision. Exactly that. <laughs> Voodoo Yaz, having fun with repulsors. God, they're such a horrible fucking kit. Right, on the inside of his leg, we've got some shadows in here, so now we'll start getting some really tiny highlights. This guy's not a complete fucker to hold like this, I promise. You probably can't see any of what I'm about to do, unfortunately, but on the inside ankle joint, we're just getting a tiny highlight in there. So you can see where that, that wet paint is. Just because every other part of this is quite dark. Certainly by the time we get into like his inside leg, so when we're getting right in around the uh, off screen, so that's not help, inside around the crotch area and the inside of his uh, calf there, all of that will still be dark. But there's a good chance that this bit might catch a quick highlight. So just doing that gives us one extra point of interest on that leg get a little bit more detail sent out to our audience by just giving it a quick highlight. Do his shoes. Okay. Turn the model that way and just again hit the top of the knee pad trim. Uh, we'll do a little highlight in and around what would be the top of his knee where that uh, feather sword is. bit more nose, we'll hit this ankle guard. Starting to brighten up a bit now. Get the back of his leg. Okay, so on this thigh protector, we know where that little protrusion is. That's where those um, uh, the holster and the little uh, pouch goes. So what we'll do is we'll just protect this side of the mini, and we'll hit that front top edge with a highlight. Like so. Not a lot of one, just a little one. Uh, Ragnar is going to show off his uh, his bits, so we'll give them a highlight. Championship belt, that's going to be gold. He's won the WWF. Let's get in here on where the abs would be. Get a nice small highlight coming in from the top here. Get the packs. Again, tiniest amount of paint, but plenty of air. Keep that cone nice and tight. Make sure that you're only hitting the areas you want. Okay. 
get them super bright. Now remember guys, for those of you that are new to the stream perhaps, we've got quite a lot of people I've seen join as uh, followers, names I don't recognize. Every month, we run two competitions, bare minimum. It's the last stream day of every month. Last stream was our giveaway day. We gave away a £50 hobby voucher. Person that won it immediately turned it into Element Games. Picked up for the price of just about three or four quid, Nagash with that voucher. That's a fucking cool model right there. One day someone's going to commission me to paint him and I will enjoy every fucking minute of it. Love that dude. Now he's not Bobo the Clown from uh, the, the 1980s. Or 90s, that might have been a 90s toy. God, he looks amazing. We also give away a mini painted by me. It's always the viewer's choice. Now, last time around, the mystery box was not taken. Peckish chose to keep Ragnar Blackmane, and that's why we're taking our time painting this dude. So, make sure you join in every stream so you can watch and get your meeps to go towards buying tickets for that £50 hobby voucher. And if you want to be a subscriber to try and win the mini, we also give you an additional 3,000 meeps so you've got enough for plenty of tickets into that raffle. If you watch every stream that we do, we do three streams a week, Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday from 9pm UK time, which every stream that we do, start to finish, and you're a sub, you've got at least 11, maybe 12 entries to get that £50 voucher. Right, first highlight passes are done. Now we're going to ramp it up. So it's going to flush almost all of that out. We're going to go and grab some pretty much pure Fenrisian grey now. Windy Massive! Thank you for that host, dude. I didn't get an event for that pop-up on the thing. That's weird. But thank you very much for joining the stream, mate, and bringing your uh, your guys over here. Oh, you've missed just a bit more than Zenithal airbrushing, mate. So far, we've done a little bit of raggy. A little bit of blue, a little bit of building that up. We've done some pretty fucking gorgeous red. Especially when you put that next to that blue. That That is a... Mm. Red. Oh yeah. We also keep on raggy. Did some yellow. Let's see that beautiful, beautiful yellow through to orange fade on a shoulder pad, and not that you can see it at the moment because it's covered mostly in Tamiya tape. Just about to see the end of it is sword. So we've done loads, mate. Loads and loads and loads. Shit yourself when you get your airbrush. Don't panic. What can go wrong, dude? You're painting a toy soldier. You're not negotiating peace in the Middle East. If it all goes wrong, it's okay. It's just a toy soldier. Spectre, how you doing, man? How you doing? Voodoo, while you're complaining about painting one repulsor, I did two at once that were both four commissions, both with snow bases that you could barely fucking see. Um, oh, oh, they're they're not good. They're just not. They're just not good models. Wrong mix. Too much air. Too much air. Forty-five psi in the hose, right? I'm gonna jam the trigger down as hard as I can and control the spray. That bit was just what was left in the thing. So let's start again, build up the pressure and then bam. We're at full bore, full pressure. So 
too much air is not a problem. Problem is always too much paint in conjunction with too much air. Hi. <laughs> oh, it's your birthday, dude! Congrats, man. If I don't get to see you in time, happy birthday for them. Right, let's do the little bits and get them shot out of the way. So, quick, tiny edge highlight. That's all right. Edge highlighting with airbrushes. It's a thing, guys. Bam. La hand. Aiming for this back part of the glove, essentially. The, not the glove, the bracer, I guess. Yeah, getting that part nice and bright. The man, the myth, the mohawk! Jotun, Wolf, Ben Rear. I know he said friend wrist, but I didn't know it was quite right. I'm doing well, brother. How are you? How are you? You've definitely, with a name like that, chosen the right stream to join in, man. I'm guessing you definitely follow Wooden Spoon over there on the old YouTubes. Top of those fingers. Tell you what's not, not Smithy. Brilliant. Lo love that man. If you got your dog an account as well, like this, you can give away twice. Like it's a loophole in the system. It is what it is. I'm I'm not not going to interfere. Dude, we're painting Ragnar. Ragnar Blackmane, Primaris Edition, most beast mode of all Marines. <laughs> Smithy, give me away that sub. Let me get totally not Smithy, their meeps. There you do. Totally not Smithy, if you happen to actually not be Smithy, the commands exclamation point win and exclamation point mystery may be really, really useful for you. So again, brightest highlights going on the top of that backpack. That is the most, uh, the sort of highest point on his armor and therefore requires the brightest of all highlights. Let's just get a little bit on these vents towards the back. Again, keeping it nice and central because you want the darker blues just before you apply the gold around the uh, doggo heads. You already noted that Ragnar doesn't have black hair. Black refers to the wolf hat he wears. Yeah, I know. I keep telling everyone, everyone who's Ragnar I see with blonde hair, which is what it should be. But every single one of them, I tell them flat out, you've got the wrong color hair. Black mane, mate. Black mane. Mane. Mane of hair. Black mane. Just to see if they know that. And the majority of the people I ask that. Drunk Mystic, thank you for the follow. Turn go, well, it should have been black, but I just liked the blonde. I just liked it in blonde or, 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 or gingery. I just, I just liked it that way. Cool. Oh, that son's dog. I am totally not brilliant. Brilliant. But they're going to be doing Ragnar blonde. Nice sort of dirty blonde hair. Nothing crazily bright because it's going to be right near his sword. So it needs to have enough difference to stand out and be very noticeably different to his sword. So you go with a really dirty, dirty blonde. Brown with a little bit of highlights rather than yellow with highlights. Right, back on Raggy. We're going to do one tiny highlight on his actual foot, so right at the tip of his foot there, but we're not going to do his, um, that. We're not going to do his that. We will do another tiny highlight again. Look at how I'm supporting the airbrush, making sure we've always got a nice firm hand when you're doing anything detail-oriented. Same as you would do with a brush, you know, but we're just bracing it for the trigger pull. 
just on the top of that. Cinnabar! Thank you for that follow, Matt. Welcome to the stream. On the knee pad, remember this point out from the centre. We're not going to do right here in the centre. We're going to come out from the centre around this side of the model because that's the most common viewing angle for it, let's be honest. And then here, we're just going to hit that highlight right in towards the top of that knee pad. That built-in knee pad, at least. So. Staying kind of steady. Just making sure we're barely hitting the amount of paint. It's not right the way back to here, which is exactly what we want, because we want to leave a nice little bit of uh, darker there. So we do an edge highlight on this part of his knee pad. There's again that bit of um, contrast coming through. The tiny highlight knife, same kind of size as on the uh, ankle support, just there on the back of his car just in case that shows through against the cape. Fire protector, obviously, that's going to be again, a decent sized highlight because it's right out there in the open. And then you can see the difference between that one leg, look at those super bright highlights. And this one, which is very dull by comparison. As before though, on here we're going to hit the front of his shoe. It just helps frame the start of the model. All of this is going to be kind of cold looking. Still undecided on what we're going to do with that bit of masonry and the rocks around it. How have you based your space dogs, Peckish? With a tiny highlight around the hilt of his uh, feather sword. We also do the highlight coming down from the top now. And these knee protectors, there you are, there's one. This one's trickier. But we got it. Easy peasy. No, Ragnar doesn't have black hair. No, Bl Black Mane was the name of the wolf he killed, so the wolf pelt should be black. Alright, let's do the rest of the legs, and then we'll work up to that torso, and then we're pretty much we're over budget now on our time, so we're going to be closing in pretty soon and finding somebody else to raid. Again, apologies, no whip, but... Once we started this, we kind of wanted to get it to its actual finish, rather than be mixing in the highlight color to a highlight on the fly on an extreme. Oh God, Apollonius! Apollonius, yeah. Oh, what? Thank you very much for that uh, follow. Best background music anywhere. Love it. You are a boss, and I love you because I spent hours trawling through YouTube for some royalty-free music that fit what we would normally play here. Much appreciated, man. All right, let's make sure Ragnar is representing in that uh, David Bowie slash labyrinth style of like thrust them forward I thought they worked with wolves how can we killed one there are no wolves on Fenris I'll let you mull over that one for a bit Jotun Wolf Fenrir dude thank you very much for bringing that sub much love dude Exclamation point win and exclamation point mystery. I suggest you check out both of those commands. Tells you a little bit more about what we do on the regular here on the stream. We like to do at least two giveaways a month. And coming up soon, guys, remember, exclamation point Judy, J-U-D-I, and score, S-K-O-R, in the chat. 
for the Indominus Box release weekend, which is the 25th of July. See, I got the month right this time. For that release weekend, we have chosen one mini from each side of the forces in the box. I say we, I do mean we. We as a community voted on which minis we're going to paint. Spectre Wolf says he's got black hair, damn it, I've sawed it. In half? Maybe that's why it's not black anymore. Maybe that's what we're going to do black. I've seen him with dirty blonde hair several times. I don't think the original sculpt, when the Evian Auto team painted it, I don't think that was blonde. I think that had black hair. But since there, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure he's been blonde. Right. Onto the packs where we talk a bit more about our giveaway for the Indominus weekend. So that weekend, the 25th of July, you guys have voted we're painting the Judicia and we're painting the Scorpeth Lord. We're going to paint them both on stream and only on stream in that weekend. And like I said earlier on, we've done some crazy challenges in a weekend. We did an entire Chaos Night that we raffled off and gave away. We did last weekend, one before, the one before, the weekend before last, we did an entire 118 mini Nurgle Demon Army in one weekend. Less than 48 hours for that. It was a challenge. It was a challenge. It left me a slightly delirious man at 5 a.m. on Monday when we were just wrapping up the stream. But I think this is our toughest challenge yet. We're going to paint both those two characters to a high quality. They've got to look the part. This is absolutely brand new minis. It's going to be the first time they're painted on Twitch. They've got to be good, right? We're going to paint them in that weekend. We're going to raffle them off. And whoever wins the overall raffle gets first choice of either the Judicia or the Scorpeth Lord. Second place gets the other one. Seems fair. But wait, that's not all. Not only will you be taking home that very nicely painted character model, I will throw in the rest of the faction brand new on Sprue. So you will win a character model done to almost commission display standard. I say almost because normally we take an entire weekend to do one guy. We have to cut a couple of corners here and there, but not many. So you're looking at, for the Judicia, including the cost of the model, somewhere in a region of 140-ish pounds worth of price. The Scorpeth Lord, maybe closer to 160. He's a big boy. He's a lot of plastic. So that's already a good prize, but then an entire start to a brand new army just chucked in there. Why not? So that stream is going to be raffled off. You will have to buy tickets. But that is the release weekend stream, the 25th. If you want to vote for the color schemes to paint either of those two characters in, head on over to the links in those two commands, Judy and Score, and get your votes in. Right, Peckish. What are we thinking for this armor color? Let me just change the exposure back up to our normal standard so it's brighter. It knocked down so it was easy to see me when I was painting the highlights in. What are we thinking? Obviously, got plenty of areas of shadow to go in there. But I'm liking the blue. As soon as 
promise you this is going to change everything. As soon as we put that blue next to that red. Ooh. Oh, you naughty man. Look at that red. Look at that red. Just... And now, let's carefully unpack his pig sticker. You're unhappy with me? Why are you unhappy with me, Spectre? You love me. I love this bit. Oh, look at that orange. That that is just pure fire right there. No Scottish chapter. I mean sure. I picked all the first finding ones. And then I went on to Lexicanum, or whatever it's called. And I just picked the, the next, like, four or five or something. It's like, I like that one, I like that. Oh, I hate that colour scheme. Fuck that one off. <laughs> that one's cool. So here we go. We've got that orange and yellow. We've got that beautiful red. And that will all be tempered by that fucking epic blue. It's a damn good start. It is a damn good start to this guy. I'm going to end the stream now. I'm going to go and find somebody else to raid. But next stream, which is Sunday, 9 o'clock, as usual, I'm going to carry on with Ragnar. I may do... I'll tell you what, we'll stay away from oils on this guy. Not... We've done a lot of oil washing recently, and I love his technique. And we may still pull it out for doing the fur, because that is going to come in super clutch on the fur. But aside from that, I think we'll just do acrylics on everything else. So I may do another coat of matte varnish on this guy to protect all of that airbrush work that we've done today. But otherwise, no work will be done on this guy between now and Sunday stream. On Sunday stream, we'll work on the armor, we'll get the shadows built in, we'll get those highlights started off. Once we've got that done, we're almost at the point where we can start assembling the guy. And I'd really like to get that, that nice sort of assembly feel to it. We'll also try and get some work done on the sword, for the area around the blade to really snap that blade into focus. Let's see how much we can get done on Sunday. Oh. Right. Let's go find somebody to raid. Let's have a quick check out actually on our polls right now. Let's refresh both of these. So currently, for our Necron, Gypsy Danger Crons up by one. Dude, there is no whip, dude. It is quarter to 12 and we've just stopped painting. We are about 25 minutes behind schedule, but I wanted to get the armor done once we'd started it. Boat, Gypsy Danger Crons. That's definitely my favorite scheme. Close second, one vote behind. He got fucked up out of 90s Rave Crons, aka a lot of Crons. It's very, very close in that, that battle. For the Space Marine chapter, for the Judicia. It's still Ultramarines by three votes. Sons of Medusa coming in second. Dank Angles. And Black Templars, only one vote behind that. It is close. Close at the top. Spectre says, what the fuck is a Gypsy Danger, Cron? Gypsy Danger is the mech from Pacific Rim. And I love that film. We're going to paint the Cron like that if that wins. And it's going to be banging. Gypsy Danger Crons. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, who's on Twitch? I'll tell you what, let's absolutely scare someone shitless today. So instead of going to somebody that we know, 
Let's see who else. It's got that minifigures tag on. And we go and raid somebody with like one or two viewers if we can. Uh, so, looking for English speaking streams. Oh, we got Thor from Crisis Protocol. That could be cool. Uh, that's people playing League of Legends. That's not many figures. You're using the wrong tags, people. Yeah, I think we need to go to Perry Paints Poorly. When we raid, I want you guys to get rowdy, as always. I want emotes all over the place. I want this guy to actually poo himself with excitement about how many people just jump into his stream and kick off. Here we go. All the emotes. All the emotes. This tour doesn't look bad. It's still in the early stages, but it's looking good. See you guys Sunday, live at 9. Catch me on YouTube as well. Peace out, everyone. Have a good weekend.
fire forge. I can still go to the hollow. So you'll get three off. You do six more. Do six more. We'll just lose five. What the fuck? Do do 